the word that God has deposited in my heart is a very special word. So there will be a practical application to it. You know, in order for me to stay within the time frame, I will be giving you two or three points that you can take and prayerfully ask the Lord to enhance it in your spirit. But it's very profound. I believe it is highly prophetic. Um, you know, this is not something that I gave to other ministries, but this is purely for us for this time the Lord has given. You know, my heart, I started crying when the Lord was still unfolding it in my spirit because I didn't have it probably till one in the afternoon that the Lord started to speak. We'll come back today for what God has in store that he wants to speak for the next year. From 11 to 12.30, I want you to know this place is usually packed with a lot of new people as well that come, that come to receive a word. And I want you to know the two things that happens just after we enter the new year with praise and worship. There's going to be an offering. You know, that offering is between you and God, an offering of faith, an offering that you say, God, I don't know what my finance would look like this year, but I believe that you are the provider. And I'm going to trust you with, with an act of faith into the future. That's the kind of offering. That's between you and God. You know, as the Lord leads you, be led by the Lord. And then we will wait for the word that God has. But I believe we are entering into something beautiful. Can I get a witness here? So it's going to be a very highly prophetic word that I want to release over the people of God today. And I want to title this message with these words. If you have the words there. The ultimate passing through. The ultimate passing through. We also have the Lord's table, so I have to rush. What do you mean by passing through? It's a very powerful word in the Bible. It's got a descriptive, defining Greek word called dear kamai. Dear kamai is a Greek word. And I want to give you the definition of that word. Bear with me, please. I want to give you the definition of that word. What do you mean by dear kamai? It means to go through, pass through. It means pass through a place. It means travel the road which leads through a place. Pass, travel through a region. It simply means you're just passing through. You're not going to be resting there. You're not going to be staying there. You're just passing through. And I want to declare about the ultimate passing through. Church, remember, events in our lives, situations that we go through, when we see that as permanent, God says, it's just a passing through. Can I get a witness here? So what do you mean by this word? I want to bring some very powerful truth, and I want some of our young people also to latch on to it with some intensity. Number one, the first point that I want to release before you. Remember, the problems in your life is not your destination. It's passing through. I want everybody to know that you might have gone through some tough situations in your life where you thought it's all coming to an end. But God has a word for you. That was not your place of resting. It was just a place of passing through. If you can believe that some of your problems are not your destination, but passing through, can you give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? Where do you find that? So we find that twice in the life of Jesus. Can we read Luke chapter number 4 and verse number, verse number 20, 28? Please read. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill, which, was, which their town was built, so that they, they could throw him down the cliff and kill him. They wanted to murder Jesus. But passing through their midst, he went away. 
until the plan of God is accomplished in your life, no matter who decides to kill you, you're going to pass through that. Can, can I get somebody to believe? Come on, church. This church has gone through some situations, but I want to declare over here this afternoon, all those situations that we went through, it was just passing through because God has something glorious ahead in the future for the days to come. Can I get somebody to believe that your problem and what the enemy had planned in your life, God is just making it a pass-through moment. If you believe that, can you put your hands together, give the Lord a praise. Pass-through. I believe what I'm going through is a passing through moment. Passing through event away. This is seen twice in the life of Jesus. But how many of you know, you know, with Jesus, it was not just while he was on the earth. Even the tomb that was prepared for him, he went into the tomb. Normally, people go into the tomb, stays there. But for Jesus, even the tomb was passing through. The tomb could not hold him. Death could not arrest him. He said, I'm entering to come out. Let me tell you, if the anointing of the Lord is upon you, no matter what you go through, you will come out of that situation because it's just going to be a passing through. Come on, if anybody believes that this year, on the last day of this year, can you believe some of the things that you went through was just a passing through moment for something greater and glorious? If you believe that, give the Lord a shout of praise in the house pass through. So number one, your problem is not your destination. It is just a passing through. Number two, your success is not your destination. It is also passing through. Can I get a witness here? Some people think, you know, because I had a ministry, because God blessed me here, that is going to be the end of the story. But I'm here to say, that is not the end of the story. You were just passing through the biggest miracle you saw, the biggest healing that you experienced, the greatest move of God in your life. You were just passing through into something more glorious because God has a way of taking you from glory to glory. Can somebody declare, even my blessing was just a passing through. If you believe that, can you shout a hallelujah in the house? So we read this in Luke 17, 11. Luke 17, 11. Can I ask people to read that? Your success is also passing through. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing through. The word is, dear Kamai. He was passing through between Samaria and Galilee. Samaria and Galilee is not his destination. Jerusalem is a destination. But he's passing through. Come on, church. Some of you need to believe that on this last day of the year, that your, some of your greatest move is just passing through into something more powerful. If you can believe that, I want some of you to make a noise as if you know that you don't have another day, another Sunday this year. You need to give it up on this Sunday for this year. Come on. Somebody... Passing through. So what happened when he passed through? Can we read, please? When he passed through, can you read, um, you know, from next to us, please? Yes. Next to us. Keep reading. And as he entered a village, he was met with, somebody read that, please. Yes. Mm. Mm. So one of the most powerful healings have taken place. It was not just one leper. It was 10 lepers. It was like a club of lepers. Union of lepers that were wholesale healed. Jesus healed them all one word, be healed. Ten of them, one of the most powerful. Jesus healed lepers, you know, in isolation as individuals. But now it's a group. He could have said, my goodness, gracious, I'm going to start a ministry called Lepers Healing International. But no, 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 he's just passing through. Yeah. 
When the disciples asked him, Lord, can we make three tents here on the Mount of Transfiguration? He said, no, no, no. I'm just passing through. Come on. Hallelujah. Some of you need to know that some of the greatest move of God in your life is just a conduit to something more powerful. You are just passing through. If you believe this church is... All the miracles that we saw, all the healings that we saw, all the things that God has done in this church, we are just passing through. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. It is just passing through. I love this. I'm trying to look, at, look that for that passage. Let me see if I can find it. You know where Paul says, yeah, I got it. Acts 19.21. This was not just with Jesus, also with his apostle. Acts 19.21. He said this. Now, after this event, Paul was sold in the spirit. He knew in the spirit to pass through. You know, you need, the Holy Spirit is telling you, you're just passing through. The Holy Spirit told Paul, you're passing through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem. So that is the place you're going. But you're passing through. Miracles happen in Macedonia. But you're passing through. So I'm going to make a declaration today. Your greatest attack in your life, you're passing through. Your greatest miracles in your life, you're passing through. If you believe that, can you make a statement of praise in the house? Come on, if you believe... God is letting you pass through something into something more glorious. We are not going to put a tent. Make, come on, if you believe that, give a lot of praise in the house of the Lord. You're passing through. Now, the third important truth that I want to bring before you, truth number three, or point number three. Usually, I don't preach with points. Point number three. You know, you have to remember there's a difference between destination and purpose. Of course, destination and purpose are connected, but they're not the same. So when Paul says, can we read that passage once again, Acts 19, verse number 21. He says, my destination is Jerusalem, but my purpose is from there I must go to Rome. Did you get that? My destination is Jerusalem, but my purpose is Rome. And who told that? The Holy Spirit. And how many of you know it was in Jerusalem that Paul was nabbed and taken freely to Rome? Jerusalem usually was, for Jesus, Jerusalem was a final destination. But for Paul, Jerusalem is a platform for another purpose of God. And I heard the Lord tell me today, Tell my people the next year they're going to experience both destination and purpose. Some of you, your destination will be a house, but the purpose will be greater. Some of your destination will be a ministry, but your purpose will be greater. Some of your destination will be a marriage, but your purpose will be greater. Some of your destination is buying a car, but your purpose will be greater. So can somebody declare today, as I pass through this days, pass through the situation, God is opening up destination and purpose in my life. If you believe that, can you? Can somebody, somebody who believes that, make a noise in the house of, I'm hearing it loud and clear. You will have both destination and purpose coming into your life. That's in the area of business. Come on. Eve, take that as a word from the Lord. Destination and purpose. Can somebody receive that as a word for your life? Can you prophesy this? Take this word as the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and speak over your life. Next year, I'm going to see destination and purpose coming together. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that over ministries. I declare that over travel. I declare that over marriages. I declare that over new job. I declare that over new house. But that's not your purpose. Your purpose is greater in the name of Jesus. Jerusalem is your destination, but... Rome is your purpose. Oh, come on, church. Are you following what I'm trying to say? God is taking you through 
to some destination. I'm seeing a vision right now in my spirit. Can I declare it? I see at this point, meaning it is happening in virtual time, real time. At this point, some of you seated here, you were going into a destination and purpose, but I saw a dark attack coming over you, declaring over you, you will not move from this place into your destination and purpose. But in the spirit realm, I'm experiencing that angels have been dispatched to push back that darkness and say, hey, you are going to pass through into your destiny and your purpose. If you believe that, can you make a sound as loud? Or you can do better. If you believe God is releasing you, just like Jesus passed through, just like Jesus passed through, you're going to pass through, pass through. Somebody say yes in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. I don't have time to explain. Point number four. You know, what do you do when you pass through? What do you do when you pass through? You know, this is a problem with many, many believers. Because when they passed through, they became, become disappointed, discouraged, leading them to a place of despair, thus immobilizing them, paralyzing their intents and passion, and take them to a place where they're angry and bitter, bitter against God, angry at their fellow people because they feel that, they feel this, you know, pressure of passing through. But church, this is a place where we grow up. I want to look at a few passages here. You know, when you pass through, what you do? Can I read some passages for you? I don't want to, I don't have time to explain, but you will get the point. When you pass through, what you do? Let's read some of them. Acts 14.24, or 15.3, Acts 15.3. And being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria. So when you pass through, you feel the tension because you're not where you're supposed to. And sometimes you feel that the enemy wants to kill you when you're passing through. But what did the apostles do? They are passing through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. That means even when you're passing through, you can bring joy to somebody. Oh, come on. We have to learn that Christian life is not about always success and spectacular. Sometimes it is just passing through, but while you're passing through, can you encourage somebody? Can you say, God has been good to me? Can you give a testimony? Can you say, God, if I have got a chance, I want to encourage somebody. Can I hear the voice of people who want to say, yes, I have not reached my destination, but I've got some testimonies to say. Only such people. Can you make a shout of praise in the house of the Lord? You still need to serve the Lord. Oh, come on. Can I get somebody to tell your neighbor, which we don't normally do it here, but this is a moment where we have to encourage somebody and tell your neighbor, I, I, you know, I'm passing through, but I want you to be blessed. Come on, tell somebody, I'm passing through, but I want you to be blessed. Because you need to know your Christian life wherever you are. Whether you have reached the destination or on the way to a destination, you're not going to have a life of mundane. You're not going to sit there bitter and angry. You're going to bring joy to somebody. You're going to say, I've got a testimony. You have to bear fruit even while you're passing through. 
because god is looking at what is the disposition of your heart and how is the intent of your heart matching up with the purposes of god god says if you are going to praise me only when you reach your destination i'm sorry i'm trouble with you but let me tell you some of you are going to say even before i reach my destination i want to bring some reports i want to encourage somebody i want to say god is good in my life can Oh, you heard me. I want some of you to break that ceiling that's been put upon you by the devil and say, hey, you tried to put me in a box, but even in the box, I'm blessing somebody. I'm praying for somebody. Somebody help me preach here. Hallelujah. Let me read another passage. You know, Acts 15:41. Oh, there are many more. Acts 15:41. When he passed through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the church. Your passing through moment should become a time to encourage somebody. Or oh, some people come and say, until I get that fulfillment of the promise, then only I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm waiting for my testimony day. You can say as loud as you can. Let the devil hear that on the last day of this year. Yes, I'm passing through. I have not reached my destination and full purpose. But in the meantime, if I get an opportunity to build somebody, to encourage somebody, to pray for somebody, I'm going to do it. Only such people can you make a joyful sound in the house. That's... Come on, somebody help me here. Confirming the church. Can we read... Maybe one more. Acts 19. If anybody wants to receive this, as a, as a big, you're sending like a missile against the enemy who said, you're, you're just passing through. You know, you're not reached your destination. You've been trying this for long, but you're just still in the passing through. You're going to hit the devil where he hurts. Are you ready? If you believe this is going to be your life, can you make, I'm going to sign up for this. Even if I'm only alone here, I'm going, but I'm sure there'll be a few more people. That's going to join this move. Acts 19.1. And it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. But then when he's passing through, the Bible says he made some declaration. Just as he was passing through. And what is the declaration? If God willing, I'm going to come back. And in Ephesus begins the biggest move of God ever. Because in Ephesus, he tells, I want to go to Jerusalem. He was still passing through Ephesus. But then he says, the first thing he says, oh, this is the anointing on somebody. Can you read verse next to verse? Next to verse. Acts 19, next to verse. Can you read loud, please? Oh, let me tell you, your destination is Jerusalem, but now you're going through Ephesus, but your word is, is anybody wants the Holy Spirit. The Lord told me to tell this, some of you are passing through, days and moments are going to become moments where you're going to ignite somebody with the fire of the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, can I... Come on, hallelujah. Yes, our destination could be the building, but let me tell you something. We are not going to wait till the building. People are going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Can somebody who believes that shout a hallelujah in the house? Whether we have a building or not, we are going to see the anointing of the Holy Ghost come upon people. Anybody willing to join to say, in the days to come, while I'm passing through, I'm leading people into the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is a call to a greater purpose. You're passing through not to put off your own fire. You're not passing through 
in order to snuff out the fire of somebody else. You're passing through to ignite some new people with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say, devil, I'm not going to wait till the miracle happen. I'm not going to wait till I reach my destination because every day is a day that the Lord has made. If he has called me, my days are special and precious. I want to bless somebody. I want to lead somebody into the Holy Ghost anointing. If you believe that, can you make a sound in the house of the Lord? So you bear fruit while you're passing through. So I'm going to make a declaration. This church has got some destination where God has spoken. But we are not going to wait till we reach our destination. That's not our focus. We are going to continue to serve the Lord in the meantime. Can I get somebody who can believe that? If the church is happy to join me in this chorus, can you make a shout that's declarative? Who is the best example of this? Acts 10.38. Who is the best example? I thank God for Paul, but Acts 10.38. And God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He, the word there is, he passed through doing good and healing. So that means even when you are passing through, you can do good. If somebody believes that, can you say, I receive it? You know what you have done today by your affirmation to this word? You're actually breaking the back of the enemy and telling the devil, you got it all wrong, Mr. Devil, because you thought you can suffocate me, disappoint me because I've not reached my destination, but I'm going to make a statement here. Even while I'm passing through, I'm going to do good in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to be used by the Lord. Can somebody... Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hey, I feel like preaching. And point number five, I think so, right? Point number five. Because I'm not used to this point thing. Point number five. Even when you're passing through, you need to be led by the Holy Spirit as to the destination. You can't say, I'm passing through because I have a project. I'm passing through because that's my focus and aim. Let me tell you, you know, don't get me wrong. There are people, motivational speakers that says, you know, how you should, you should have your dream come true and how to make your dream, make your dream and how to... You know, it's all about your dream. But I want to make a statement. You know, full disclosure. I'm going to make the statement. The day that I came to the Lord Jesus, I died to my dreams. I live for his dream. I live for his purpose. I don't want to be a preacher standing in the platform and saying, you can do it. Go get it. I'm not Mr. Obama. <laughs> Come on. There's a champion inside of you and how you can do it. Let me tell you what's the point of you becoming a champion for the sake of your flesh and for the devil. Because after all this is over, you know, the cha many champions will be in the lake of fire. But today I want some of you to say this. Lord, because you have called me, Every day of my life, I want to see what is a destination for my life. Even when I'm passing through, take me to your purpose. Take me to your destination. If that's your hunger, if that's your prayer, can you make a sound of amen in the heart? That's... Where do you see that? Acts 16 and verse number, Acts 16, verse number, what was that? Six, Acts 16, six. I want some of you to pray. And they went through the regions, passed through the regions of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit. That means when you're passing through, the Holy Spirit is still the boss to where your destination is. So on this last day 
of this year. How many of you want to say, while I'm waiting for my destination purpose, I want the Holy Spirit to take me there. Only such people on the count of three make a sound of agreement. One, two, three. By the grace of God, that's what I want to. Every passing through in my life, I want to preach. I want to bless somebody. I want to minister to somebody, raise another person, encourage somebody. May God give more grace for his purpose. But the destination is in his hand. He knows where to take me according to his plan. But let me close here with the next 10 minutes being the most important time. The ultimate passing through. What do I mean by that? The ultimate passing through. It's found in Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews 10. And is it 26? Can somebody look at? He passed through the whale. Where's that verse? Or oh, verse number 19. Brothers, no, Hebrews 10, 19, no, 20. By a new and living way that he opened through the curtain that is through his blood, flesh. I want you to follow me because I don't have time to preach. I'm going to demonstrate this if possible. Please look at me. Every priest, not every priest, the high priest, once in a year had to pass through the veil which symbolized the, the barrier between God and man. And I remember reading it today. It says, be careful, Aaron. Be careful, Aaron, that you don't pass through the veil more than once because you'll be killed. Even for Aaron the high priest, it was once in a year affair on the Day of Atonement. And that veil had four colors, purple, blue, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. Four colors, the colors of the gospel, which I don't want to get into. But that veil had something which other veil didn't have. You had the image of the cherubims. Why cherubims? Because they guard the presence of God. When man sinned, it was a cherubim that was placed on the eastern side. If anybody enters, they'll be killed right there with a flaming sword that turned in the hands of the cherubim. But God sent his son, Jesus Christ, in human flesh. Remember, it was not the body that is the focus. It's a flesh. Now, I don't want to go into difference there. The flesh represented the veiled humanity of Jesus Christ, where he hid his divinity. So on that day on the cross, the Bible says, when Jesus died on the cross, he was still on the cross, or when he died, the curtain of the temple was torn into two, from the top to the bottom. I believe it was the same cherubim from heaven. And said, the door is now opened. The Bible says, but that, what we saw in the, on the outside was a veil. But what actually happened was Jesus broke through the veil called his flesh and opened a new way. And I looked at the Greek translation and I want to translate it exactly. There's some difference, some words that brings you that sense of oomph and rhythm inside of you. The word says, 
having therefore, brethren, boldness in the entering into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, which entrance into, this is a Greek translation. Now look at this. He inaugurated for us a road, freshly slain and living through his whale named his flesh. What was Jesus doing on the cross? He was actually inaugurating a new road. I don't know if it happens here, but in India, it's a big deal. When a new road is inaugurated, you have got the ministers and the dignitaries and people and celebration and temple priests because people have got a new road. And Jesus was that day. And I'm telling you, the Greek word is specifically clear. He was inaugurating a new road. He said, from now on, there's a new road that I'm inaugurating. And you know what's the specialty of the road? That road. I've never seen a road called that. You know, I've got, you know, 81 Street, 25 Street. The roads are, have different names. Smith Street. But this road has got a name. It's called Living Road. That means the moment you enter that road, you are getting life. Church, there's no other road that produces life. Jesus passed through and said, I'm inaugurating this. Any person who's dead, any person who's lost, the moment he enters his road, he receives life. Is anybody in this place who got a chance to walk on that road? And Come on, can, can I get a statement of faith in this house? Anybody in this place who got a chance to... Walk on the road. You know, the priest, he, he moved the veil. And then he would put it back. Because nobody else can follow the priest into the holy place. But Jesus Christ, he said, I'm not removing the veil to put it back. I'm inaugurating a road on which you can come boldly. With confidence. Head lifted up with no shame or condemnation. And you're not coming into the holy of holies of a temple. You're walking into the throne of grace, into the presence of God. Can somebody who is thankful that Jesus went through so we can have a road to heaven, only such people, can you shout a hallelujah? In the the way. So you walk. So I made a decision today on the 31st day of this year. I'm walking on this road. And every step that I'm taking, the road tells me life. 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 Anison is walking on a road called life. Anybody in this place who's walking on the road called life, can you make it with a face that is shining with radiance? You don't have to feel ashamed. Be joyful because this road is called life. Only people are walking on the road called life make a shout of praise in the house of Allah. Life! Life! Now, I don't have time. So there's one passage that has ministered to me and I've seen miracles, but today I want to just take it a little more a step further because I understood a few things for the first time. Hebrews 4.16. So what happens? So you walk on this road. It's a new road. It's a fresh road. It's called living road. And it takes you into the presence of God. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? And, once, and, 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 and what happens with this road? The only reason, so somebody said even the high priest could not enter into the veil without a sense of confidence because he could be killed. Death was the biggest signboard when you enter the most holy. Death. But here it says you walk with your head up with confidence on this road. Why? Because it says... The reason you can walk on this road, you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. 
I want to make a declaration today. You know, everybody who's on the road, the only qualification that you have to enter this road called life is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. If you believe that is your credential and that's all what you need, can you make a sound of joy in the house? That's all. I want to make another statement here. The Bible says, Romans 5, look at me. Death and sin, condemnation, pass through. The same word in Greek, pass through from Adam. So it went from Adam. The Bible says, even the saints, like Moses, it passed through them. I think the two exceptions are maybe Elijah and you know, Enoch. But it went through everybody. But finally, death, and condemnation. It passed through, passed through, passed through, and passed through Mary, and then finally passed through and came to a person called Jesus. <sighs> and Jesus said, death, this is a last place. Condemnation, this is a last place. You are going to be blocked here. Because I live my people are going to live as well. But the Bible says Romans 5, from that point onwards, from Jesus, something is passing through. It's passing through you and me, called righteousness, called grace of God, called life, called dominion and reigning in life. Let me tell you, till Jesus Christ, if it is death from Jesus, life is passing through. Can somebody who receives righteousness, life, come on, grace of God, passing through, can you make a statement of praise in the house? It's passing Okay, I have to come back, I have to come back, I have to come back. So you pass through where you're passing through. So Jesus passed through, and the Bible says, pass through into heaven, and we are now on that road. When you enter that road and enter that place, let me tell you, receive this. This is real. Hebrews 4.16, let me wind up here, Hebrews 4.16. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to a throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Bible says when you enter that place, you'll obtain two things for sure. Grace and mercy. So somebody asks, what's the difference between grace and mercy? Mercy deals with the judgment of God. It erases the judgment Grace bestows new blessing. I'll give you one example. A man is now indicted, he's standing before a judge and facing the judgment of fury. And the judge says, all your past crimes have been forgiven. That's mercy. But if the judge were to go the extra mile and say, you know, in addition to that, I'm giving you a BMW. That's grace. He removes your sin and bestows you with blessings. Church, can I get somebody who's on this road called life? Entering into the place called heaven. Can you receive for the new year grace and mercy? Come on, you can do better. Mercy deals with your past. Grace deals with your present and future. Both are there at the throne of grace. And some of you need to know that's all what you need in your life. God's grace and God's mercy. And on the road with Jesus opened. You know, my pain is, even though mighty road was inaugurated, I know I don't want to tell the name of the person. In our church, long back, he refused to go on Anthony Henday. The government has invested billions of dollars, but he will still go through the streets, small streets, because for years he has traveled from A to B on a certain strip of land or road. He can't make use of the new road, which would have reduced the journey from 45 minutes to 10 minutes. 
But I want you to know Jesus says, I have opened this big road, inaugurated it, but many of my people are not coming. Come. Come with boldness. Come with expectation. Come, come with joy. For you are going to go back with grace and mercy. So I want to take a minute with this. We'll go into the time of prayer or the Lord's table. I was struck by the word time of need. Time of need. What is the time of need? Where you can get this grace and mercy. And I found something very interesting. The word there is eukairos. I want you to remember these two words. Eukairos. Eukairos. And the opposite of that is a kairos. Where do you find the Second Timothy four two? Preach the word in season. You kairos. Out of season, a kairos. But the word there used is not just kairos. Kairos means the opportune time. The word is you kairos. I don't know how to explain it. But I looked at the word you in the Bible is the word well done, well, good. Right season, convenient time, blessed time. When Jesus says, you know, well done, my servants, the word is you, well done. So what is he trying to say? He's saying, yes, there's a moment called Kairos moment, my moment for your life. But I'm going to add the word you, meaning well, good, excellent, beautiful. That means he's not only giving you time, he's also adding the word good. Well done. Some of you, I heard in my spirit, you're entering the season of eukairos, meaning it's going to be both timely and good. Timely and good. If you can believe that, can you just say an amen? Eukairos, right season. And when that moment come, you're going to obtain grace and mercy for the time of need. So I'm here to say the ultimate passing through was Jesus Christ. Through his flesh. But that road is now opened for us to walk in it into the presence of God, into a place of his goodness, into the throne of his grace. If you're happy to walk on that road to enter his presence, I want every one of you with such a joy, with standing up and with a shout and clap, if you can, give a Lord a praise in the house. Come on, church. As you're doing that, let miracles flow. Let blessings flow. Jesus Christ has opened the door. He has passed through so we can enter the presence of the Lord. We can receive grace and mercy. How many of you want to say for the year 2024, I need grace from God. I need mercy from God. If that's your decision, can you shout hallelujah? Without that, I cannot face tomorrow. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Pass through. Take a few seconds to pray. And as we celebrate the Lord's table, this declares we can walk on the road called life. You know, I normally don't do this, but only for people who want to express, maybe for 10 seconds, do you want to show that even to yourself and to the devil 
that you are on the road called life. Meaning every time you step, life is coming. Life is coming. Life is coming. If you want to make that with an action on your feet, can you do that by faith right now? F action on feet. Life is entering. Life is coming. Life of Christ is coming into you. Can you believe that? Come on. Hallelujah. And that life is eternal. That life is abundant life. That life takes you into the presence of God. That life releases grace and mercy upon your life. Can you receive life in the name of Jesus? And anybody in this place who want to declare, yes, I'm passing through, but there's destinations anointed by God for my life, which will be beautiful. Destinations that will be solid, that I can rest in it, that I can stay there with purposes of God. If you believe 2024, you're not just passing through, you'll have destination. Only such people, as a sign of your faith, can you make an expressive praise in the house of the Lord. Yeah.